Good afternoon, everyone. This is Rima, your biology educator from Vistas Learning, and I welcome you all to Vistas Learning. So Vistas Learning is an online educational platform where we provide quality education for all. Here you will get all the videos from grade one to grade 12. So to get all the benefits from our channel, do subscribe to it, like, share it with your friends, family members so that someone out there get access to quality education. So we have started with chapter one in our previous class right and we have discussed about what we have discussed about what is living that is our chapter number one is the living world right so we have discussed about what is living what are the characteristics of living so we have seen that growth metabolism then uh, your cell division all these things are necessary for the uh, living organisms. This plays a major role for categorizing the living and the non-living organisms. So today will be your lecture number two. So what is your lecture number two? That is all about diversity and taxonomic categories. So in today's session, we will be learning about biodiversity and taxonomic categories. But before that, I would like to begin this session with a beautiful quotation which says that, learn from yesterday, leave for today, and hope for tomorrow. Now, did you get that? You should always learn from your past. Leave for this present day. This day is beautiful. You will not get it uh, back again, right? And always hope for tomorrow because something good is going to come on your way. So this is uh, all about today we are going to learn that diversity and taxonomic categories. Next is let us see what are the topics. The topics which we are going to cover in this session is your meaning of biodiversity. We will be understanding what is exactly biodiversity then systematics Next will be your identification. It is very much essential to identify the living organisms. Then we will be understanding about classification, nomenclature, and also binomial nomenclature. Next is your taxonomy and taxonomic categories. So these are all the topics we are going to cover in today's session. So it's going to be interesting. So listen clear carefully. Next, let us see what is biodiversity. What do you mean by biodiversity? When you see this word bio and diversity, two uh, meaning must be, right? What is bio? Bio means living. And what is diversity? Diversity means variety in living organisms. So in this living world, we have millions and millions of living organisms. Uh, we have around 8.7 million species of plants and animals. So we have to categorize them. We have to classify them. So what is this biodiversity? It means the entire number and the types of living organisms which are present on this planet. So what does it mean? It means the total number of plants, animals and their types. Everything comes under biodiversity. Now, do you know the country which is rich in biodiversity? It is your Brazil, which is richest in your biodiversity. And the state in India, which is richest, is your Kerala. It is richest. It has the maximum biodiversity. And the minimum is your Rajasthan. So, there are mainly four hotspots of biodiversity in India. One is your Himalayas, next one is your Western Ghats, and the third one is your Indo-Burma region, and the fourth one is your Sunda land. So these are the four biodiversity hotspots in India. So let us see next is your systematics. What do you mean by systematics? When you listen this word, what comes to your mind? It means what? Systematic arrangement, right? So in this living world, 
we have lots of living organisms we have to classify them we have to name them and also we have to arrange them in a systematic manner clear so what is the definition of this the word systematics is derived from a latin word which is systema clear so it is derived from a latin word that is systema what does it mean it means the systematic arrangement of living organisms clear so it means the systematic arrangement of the living organism now who has given this it was given by your carolus linnaeus he is a scientist who has given this in the year 1751 clear so this was given by carolus linnaeus and he is known as the father of taxonomy understood okay next definition you can write that it is the branch of science <clears throat> that deals with the unique properties of species and groups to recognize and also to describe name and arrange the diverse organisms according to an organized plan so we can name the living organisms we can categorize them and also we can recognize them with the help of this and we can arrange them accordingly in a proper and organized plan so this is your systematics under the systematics identification nomenclature your binomial nomenclature everything comes next definition this is carol linnaeus he is the father of taxonomy and this one is simpson he is also another scientist he has given the definition of systematics now according to him what is the definition of systematics according to simpson he said that it is the study of what diversity of organisms and all their comparative and evolutionary relationships based on what based on comparative anatomy then physiology biochemistry and ecology so according to him this is the definition of systematics now do you understand what do you mean by diversity of organisms yes diversity means variety in living organisms then what is comparative anatomy anatomy means what it is the study of the internal structure right internal features of a living organism and physiology means studying how the different parts of the living organisms are functioning and what is biochemistry biochemistry means all the bio molecules the chemical reactions which are occurring in the living beings and what is ecology ecology means the interaction between the living and the non living organisms each living organisms they interact with the living beings and the non living world so that is the ecology that is a relationship so according to simpson he has described systematics in that manner so what is next yes next will be your identification so under systematics identification nomenclature binomial nomenclature taxonomy everything comes under systematics clear okay so what is identification um everyone has got different morphological features right uh we can identify them you also must be having many friends 50 or 100 friends how you will identify them because they have got different names right they have physical appearance is that clear so identification now how you can identify this is a fish this is a bug this is a butterfly how you will identify because of their morphological and anatomical features right uh what is morphological morphological means the physical appearance how they look how the organism look right and the anatomical means what it is the internal organs that is the genetic makeup of an organism clear anatomy means the genetic makeup of an 
organism. Now, what is identification? What do you mean by identification? You can write down the definition. It is the process of finding the correct name and appropriate position of an organism. Clear? So it is what? It is a process by which we can find out the correct name of an organism and also what? And also the position of an organism. We can find it out. Now what are the two things necessary I have said you? Yes, one is your morphology, another one is your anatomy. Clear? So the morphological and anatomical characters are examined for proper identification. So these are the two things. One is your morphology, another one is your anatomy. Clear? So by that we can identify the living organisms. Next, let us see classification. How can you classify? See, in your life also you have so many things, right? You have to classify them. Some things you require, some things you don't require, right? So you have to classify them and you have to group them together, isn't it? So in this living world, we have millions and millions of living organisms. For that, it is very much necessary to classify the living organisms and to group them in a particular rank, to group them and give them a rank. Clear? Every day, scientists are coming up with the new organisms. So we have to classify them. Now, you are a human being. Why? Because you have, uh, you have been classified under the kingdom Animalia, right? So plants, so like that way, they have, uh, have been classified, clear? So what is classification? It is a scientific arrangement of organisms in a hierarchy of groups and subgroups on the basis of similarities and differences, uh, difference, uh, differences in their traits. Clear? So on the basis of the similarities, on the basis of the differences, they are being classified into the groups, into various groups, right? In a hierarchy. That means giving them a rank. Clear? Okay. So next, it is the process by which living things are grouped into different categories based on some easily observable characters. So based on some easily observable, that means morphological features, we can categorize the living organisms. Clear? That is about your classification. So you can see here, this is a taxonomic hierarchy which shows that from the species. Species is the lowest one and the kingdom is the highest one and then that is the life. So you can see this is the classification, how the uh, taxonomic hierarchy is being done and the organisms are being classified. Clear? So, yes. Why it is needed? Why it is needed to classify the living organisms? Why? Because for the convenience of our Study. We can easily study them. If we know the living organisms, we can easily study them. Next is your knowledge of adaptations. It will give us the knowledge how the living organisms have adapted to their different places. Clear? Next is your knowledge of sequence of evolution. So, it will give us knowledge how different living organisms have evolved. All right. Okay. Next is your knowledge of phy phylogenetic relationship. It will give us a relation. It will give us a knowledge of how the different li different living organisms are related to one another, and also we'll be able to discover new organisms. If you know about classification, we'll be able to categorize the living organisms, and we'll be discovering the new organisms. Clear? Are you clear? Okay. Next, what are the advantages of classification? That was the need. Need or importance is same. Okay. So next is your advantage. It helps us to identify and study an organism easily. That is the same like which we have seen in the need, right? And new organisms can easily be identified and can be placed 
directly in their respective groups. So we can easily identify the living organisms and we can place them according to their different groups. And it makes the study of fossils easy. What is fossil? Fossils are the remains of dead plants and animals, right? So it makes the study of fossils easy. And also it helps in building evolutionary pathways. So we will be able to, uh, we will be able to build the evolutionary pathways if we know about the classification. Next, let us see what is this? What is written? Three domains of life. What do you mean by that? From where life evolved, right? These are the three domains of life. Life. So what are the three domains of life? Yes, it is R, okay. Next one is your bacteria, then eukarya, right? So these are the three domains of life. So RK, under this, methanogens, halophiles and th thermoacidophiles comes. Clear? So under RK, methanogens, halophiles and thermoacidophiles comes. Then bacteria, then eukarya. Under this, what comes first is your protista, fungi, plantae and animalia. Is that clear? Now we will see them in detail. Let us understand. Okay. So what is that? Methanogens. You can see the picture of a bacteria, right? So these are nothing. These are the primitive living organisms. Life have evolved from the bacteria. Clear? So these are the three domains of life. So methanogens are what? They are commonly found in the guts of animals and deep layers of the marine environment and wetlands. So where we find them? We find them in the guts of animals and deep layers of marine uh, sediment and wetlands. Is that clear? Next, what they produce? They produce methane. These methanogens, they produce methane and which can be used for making the biogas. So, these bacteria are being used for uh, biogas, for making the biofertilizers, uh, biogas. Clear? So, next, this is belonging to kingdom RK. So, it belongs to kingdom RK. Next is your halophiles. Now, what are these halophiles? They are also bacteria. So, they live in the hypersaline environment. So, the condition where the water is very salty. So, where we find them? We find them in the hypersaline environments and also in different salinities from moderate to extreme halophiles. And also, uh, we will see them in this uh, area where there is a higher salt concentration. So, that is all about halophiles. Next, let us see the thermoacidophiles. Now, what you can see in this picture? They are found in the extreme hot temperature like in the geothermal areas. So, thermoacidophiles are the bacteria which can survive in extreme hot temperature and also in the low pH. Clear? So, they are the bacteria, they can grow under extreme condition and also at low pH. So, they can survive at the temperature above 95 degree Celsius. So, they are extremophilic microorganisms that are both thermophilic and acidophilic. Clear? So, they can grow, yeah, I said already high temperature and low pH. So, they will be growing under these conditions. And where they are found? They are found in hot springs, environment of geothermal activity and within deep sea vents. So, they are found in extreme conditions. Is that clear? So, what we have learned? We have learned the first one that is your RK, right? So, that is RK. Under that, we have classified, RK is being classified into what? Into methanogens, halophiles and thermoacidophiles. What is the second domain? The second one is your? Yes, bacteria. The second one is bacteria. Now, bacteria are useful also and harmful also. They are useful for making this, um, uh, making what? Making in the process of 
uh, fermentation, right? They are also used in industries for preparation of vaccines and all, and they are also harmful to us, right? So it has both advantage and disadvantages. So what are the, they are belonging to prokaryotes. So they are prokaryotic organisms. Prokaryotic, pro means primitive, and karyotic means, karyon means nuclear. So they have a, a primitive nucleus. Next is they lack the membrane bound cell organelles. They do not have a proper membrane uh, bound cell organelles. So you know what are cell organelles, right? Inside the cell, you'll be having various cell organelles uh, like your mitochondria, ribosomes, Golgi apparatus, all these are the cell organelles. So bacteria, they lack that membrane bound cell organelles. Next is they also have naked DNA. And they perform all activities with only one cell. So they have only one cell and also only one chromosome. So everything they will perform with that only. Like respiration, excretion, digestion, everything they will do with only one cell. Like we human, we are multicellular, right? We have many cells. So next is um, they like the micro chambers for separating various metabolic activities. They also like the micro chambers and they have single kingdom that is known as U bacteria. Is that clear? So that is all about bacteria, which is the second domain. Is that clear? Oh, okay. Next is your U bacteria. Under bacteria, you, uh, you bacteria can be classified. So you bacteria also will be having all these characteristics like they also like this uh, membrane bound cell organelles and also in bacteria they have 70 S ribosomes. Whereas in the eukaryotes we have 80 S ribosomes. Now what is the function of ribosome do you know? Ribosome helps in protein synthesis. So this is also a type of bacteria. And the members of this kingdom of bacteria are cyanobacteria, then your actinomites, rickettsia, these are all the members belonging to this bacteria group only, that is eubacteria. Is that clear? So under bacteria, we can classify it into eubacteria. Next is, the last one is your eukarya. So, under this, the eukaryotic organisms comes. The eukaryotic organisms are the multicellular organisms. They are having more than one cells, like the plants and the animals. So, here you can see the plant cell and the animal cell, right? So, these are the organisms which comes under this. And they are divided into four kingdoms. What are the four kingdoms? You can see here that protista, fungi, plantae and animalia. So they are divided into four kingdoms. So they belong to the eukaryotes. So here you can see the plant cell and the animal cell. So what is the difference between this plant cell and animal cell? In plants, we will see cell wall. And they also have a large vacuole. Whereas in animals, we do not see cell wall. They lack the cell wall and they have a small vacuole. So we will study this in the uh, later classes. You have a different chapter for that. Next, let us see the nomenclature. What do you mean by this nomenclature? It means naming an organism. We are giving a particular name to an organism. You all have got different names, right? So that you can be identified, right? So it is nothing but naming an organism. Clear? So write it down. It is the system of naming living organisms in a way that a particular organism is known by name all over the world. So we are giving a name to a particular person so that it will be known. He or she will be known or the organisms will be identified all over the world. Like I said, there are millions of living species, right? Living organisms. So we have to identify them so that 
the name is being given it is nothing but naming an organism clear okay so what are the two types of um, uh, nomenclature one is your common name another one is your scientific names so these are the two types now what do you mean by common name we all have a common name even in the plants also they have a common name when we see other uh, when we tell mango mango is a common name when we tell rose rose is a common name right but we are they also all living organisms also have a scientific names which are given by the scientist and we cannot change it but common name it can be changed according to different states so different states they will give different common names to the flower or to the um, vegetables right common name can be changed but the scientific name it cannot be changed so what are common names let us see common names are the names which are given to an organism in a particular region so common names are the names which are given in a particular region as i said you that common name can be changed every area every region every state they might be having different names right so it is given in a particular region so you can see here in a picture what you can see a rose and then what is that ginger and then what is that dog right so what are the common names different states have got different common name different uh, regions have got different common names right so in rose in uh, bengali what we call it as a uh, gola right but in hindi we call it as a gulab isn't it so different regions has got different names similarly with the dog and with the ginger and when when we look into the different plants different vegetables we will see different common names is that clear all right okay what are the advantages of the common name what are the ad advantages it will be easy for us right to identify that so easy to pronounce and they are even short so it is very easy to pronounce when you look into the scientific name they are very difficult like when you say mango mango is a common name right but when you say scientific name magnifera indica everyone cannot remember it right so and cannot pronounce also so common names are very easy to pronounce and people are familiar to this name since childhood so you all have got common name so they call it by that name only right so they are familiar from the childhood with that name but they also have some disadvantages what are the disadvantages there might be confusion right when i said the different regions have got different common names so there might uh, might be different meaning for that right so here the disadvantages arises so what are the disadvantages all the organisms cannot be named by this method so we cannot name all the organisms by this method there will be confusion and one common no name may have got different meanings they will be having different meanings in the different countries so in different countries uh, they will be having different meaning for that for example in our country the common name uh, that is rose it might be having different uh, meaning in different country right so that is the problem with that understood are you clear with the common name okay next is what is scientific name what do you mean by scientific name scientific names are the names that is it is the taxonomic naming of an organism consisting of genus and species so scientific names are based on two things one is your genus and the second one is your what species so they are based on genus and species so scientific names are different from different species so different species has got different scientific name now what do you mean by species species means the different living organisms based on their familiar function they are grouped into one categories that is species and it differs from one species to another is that clear so it is based on two things what are the two things one is your genus and the one is your species 
always remember these are the two things next it is assigned or agreed principles and criteria so to assign scientific name we have to follow the criteria then only we can assign it clear so it is assigned by the scientist and there are various ways also how to write the scientific name and we should follow that we should follow the rules for writing the scientific name let us see the yeah next we will see the yes now see what are the rules for writing the scientific name first let us see this the rules for writing scientific name is your it should be always written in italics should not be in bold it should be written in italics and the first word in a biological name represents what genus and the second one represents the species and the scientific names should be underlined separately when you write down magnifera indica magnifera is your genus and indica is your species so you have to identify you have to underline that magnifera separately and the uh, indica separately which is your species so now see here the scientific names of the uh, some plants and animals which shows that onion its scientific name is your alum sepa how it is written it should be always written in italics and you can see the genus and the species is underlined right so alum is underlined separately and the sepa is underlined separately correct yes now next is your mango what is the scientific name of mango i have said so many times magnifera indica next what is next it is your wheat what is the scientific name of wheat the scientific name of wheat is your triticum astivum and always the scientific name the first one that is genus the capital letter always start with capital letter and the species always should be small letter you can see here right so this should be capital and this should be small letter so when you write the genus name that is t right triticum it should be t should be capital and when you write astivum that is a should be small letter so you have to follow that and you have to underline separately so similarly the human that is homo sapiens and banyan tree that is ficus um bengalensis and cat what is the scientific name of cat cat is your felis catus clear so these are the scientific names of following plants and animals so i know it is um, difficult to remember but you have to remember few scientific names these are also important for your examination okay now let us see what is binomial nomenclature so binomial nomenclature that is the naming what naming the living organisms giving them scientific names so it is a systematic arrangement so write down the definition it is a system of providing distinct appropriate names to an organism based on what based on the two words what are they these are your genus and species so based on that we are giving them a scientific uh, we are giving them a scientific names we are categorizing them clear we are giving them name so who has given that who is the father of taxonomy carolus linnaeus he has given this so you can see here what is this picture this is the picture of a p right so this is a p p is a common name p is a common name and what is this this is a scientific name what is the scientific name of p it is p sum sativum clear so this is about the binomial nomenclature it's same like the scientific name only okay next we are done with what we are done with classification we are done with nomenclature we are done with identification and also we have seen what we have seen the binomial nomenclature and the various scientific names how to write the scientific names right i hope you have understood now what's next we are going to learn about taxonomy so see what is this this is a cat 
Now you know this is a cat because you know its name. You also know its scientific name, right? But how? How to give them a name? How to identify them? So you can see that it has got different morphological features, the eyes, right? It doesn't have hands, it doesn't have legs like us, it, have, it has paws, right? So what is this taxonomy? The taxonomy is nothing but identification, classification and nomenclature. That is we have to identify that living organism, we have to classify them and also we have to name them. Is that clear? Okay, so it is the science of identification, classification and nomenclature. So all the living organisms are classified based on special characters. All right, so all the living organisms has got special characters or characteristics based on that we can classify the living organisms. So it is also given by Carolus Linnaeus. He is known as the father of taxonomy. So this is about taxonomy. Are you clear with this concept? Okay. Next one, the last one is your taxonomic, what taxonomic categories, clear? So what is this taxonomic categories? Now in this picture, what you can see? It is nothing but a hierarchy that is giving rank to particular living organisms and grouping them. So you can see this is a kingdom, right? So this is a kingdom. And this is a species, isn't it? So the kingdom is the highest one. It ranks in the highest one. And the species is the lowest one, right? So after kingdom is your phylum, then class, then order, family, genus, species. So when you go in the descending order, that is your species, genus, family, then order, class, phylum, and next is your, what is that? This is your kingdom. Is that clear? So how can you remember that? You can remember that in the easiest manner also like king of Poland called a uh, king of Poland could order finally a great salad. Like king. From the king you can take the word K. Right? King of Poland. Poland from the word uh, Poland, you can take the P, right? King of po Poland could, could. From the word could, you can take C, right? Could order. From that, you can take O. Could order finally, finally, from there we are getting F. Finally, great salad. G for genus. So, salad for species. So, this is the uh, easiest way you can remember. So, King of Poland could order. Finally, a great salad. So here is kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. So you can remember it in the easiest manner. So you can see what is your taxonomic category. It is nothing but giving a rank, categorizing them. So classification of organisms involves hierarchy in which each step represents a rank or category. So here each living organisms they have a particular rank or the category. Is that clear? Okay. Now what is that category called? Is that category called as your taxonomic hierarchy. Clear? So ranking the living organism, giving them a rank is known as your taxonomic hierarchy. So this category is a part of taxonomic arrangements which together constitute taxonomic hierarchy. So each unit of classification uh, represents a rank and which is known as your taxon. Clear? So what is taxon? Taxon means representing a rank. Clear? In a taxonomic hierarchy. So taxon are groups of similar genetically related Individuals having certain characteristics distinct from those of other groups. So taxon are nothing but the organisms which are having similar characteristics. They are grouped into one category. That is your taxon. Next, what is that? 
that is your taxonomic hierarchy right so we have seen in the uh, previous uh, slides right so what is that kingdom phylum then what comes next is your class order family genus and species right so what is this taxonomic hierarchy this is nothing but a system of arranging the taxonomic categories in a descending order so it is arranging the a uh, systematic arranging the taxonomic categories into a descending order is that clear so it was given by who linnaeus he is known as the father of taxonomy remember this is very very important for your examination so he has given in 1751 this is very easy to remember okay now we will see one by one the taxon in detail that is the rank clear the taxonomic hierarchy from the species to kingdom we will see in detail now what you can see in this picture what you can see what is species you can see here lion you can see here tiger right you can see here um this cat right so this lion tiger cat they have a similar uh, structure similar function similar characteristics based on that they are categorized so species is nothing but what but an individual organism a group of individual organisms which are characterized based on their similarities so based on their similarities <clears throat> we can identify we can categorize the living organism clear this is your species now next definition you can write down for species it is a group of closely related organisms capable of interbreeding to produce fertile offspring so these are the groups which can um, reproduce and produce the offspring so all the similar organisms are categorized into one group that is nothing but your species for example this panthera leo this is the scientific name of the lion right panthera tigris this is the scientific name of your tiger so all this they are categorized together because of their similarities clear and they can interbreed and produce the offspring so that is all about your species which is the lowest one lowest category lowest rank in a taxonomic hierarchy next let us see the genus what is this genus yes genus are the groups of the related species they have some more characteristics in common so these are the organism they have some more characteristics which are in common so here you can see this potato that is genus solanum right tomato genus solanum right then brinjal solanum so these are some more species which have the characteristics which have some more characteristics similar clear so genus comprises of related species so these are the related species which have some similar characteristics clear so that is your generic name and your species so this is the species name so here you can see that potato solanum tuberosum right tomato solanum uh, lycopersicum right so this is how the genus is being defined next is your family so family comes where family comes after the uh, that is uh, on top of the genus right so in between the order and the genus the family comes right so what is this family it is a group of genera related genera which uh, with less number of similarities as compared to genus and species so they have some more uh, characteristics but lesser right so less number of similarities in compared to genus and species like family of a uh, cat that is known as phallus catus the scientific name of the cat is phallus catus like um, uh, for example monkey uh, gorilla primates then human beings we all come under one family clear 
So that's how grouping the genus and species together into a one category. That is your family. Similarly, after family is your order. So order is same only. It is grouping the family together and classifying them. So it is what? It is the assemblage of related families. Clear? It is the assemblage of your related family. That is grouping the families together. Is that clear? Now here you can see here that order carnivora. Carnivora is animals who are meat eaters. Now under that, when you take a family of phalidae, what you can see under this family, what comes? The cat, the leopard, and the tiger, and lion, right? So this is a family which is depending upon the meat. They are carnivorous. So they are grouped into one order. That is the order carnivora. Clear? So, these all the organisms like cat, uh, then tiger, then lion. So, they are belonging to one family and they have got some similar characteristics. So, they are grouped under this order carnivora. Like this family uh, canidae, like dog, wolf and fox. They are also grouped under this order carnivora. Clear? Okay. Next here is solanese, right? So this is potato and tomato. They are also coming under one family. And they are grouped under one order. That is known as polynomials. Um, uh, Clear? So they are grouped under this order. So that is all about their order. Understood what is order? Means grouping the families together. Assembling the families together is your order. Is that clear? Okay. Next is what? It is your class. So what is class? Grouping the order together. Grouping the order together is your class. That is the assemblage of related orders. Clear? For example, your reptiles. No, then your, uh, this, is, uh, this is your, yeah, this is your uh, primate, right? Monkey and gorilla. They are coming under one order, isn't it? That is your primate. So, we are uh, grouping them together and they are coming under the class that is mammalia. So, this primate and the carnivorous all comes under this class that is your mammals. They can reproduce that is your mammalia. Is that clear? It is nothing but assembling that is grouping the order together. So, this is your class. Next is your phylum. Now, in case of animals, we call phylum, whereas in case of plants, we call division. Clear? So, what is phylum? It is nothing but it is categorizing the class together depending on their various similarities and characteristics. So, classes amphibia, reptilia, aves, mammalia all come under which phylum? That is your phylum chordata. Chordata means those organisms, they have got vertebrates. Clear? So, the aves, reptiles and then your mammals all comes under one phylum. That is your phylum chordata. This is there in your chapter number uh, 4 in unit 1. We will understand the different phylums and the division when we go in detail into the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom chapters. Last one that is the highest category, highest rank that is your kingdom, right? So, under this kingdom, it is divided into two. What are they? Kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia. So, kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia. Clear? So, under kingdom plantae, the plants are categorized. Whereas under kingdom animalia, the animals are categorized. So is that clear? This is all about your taxonomic hierarchy. So what we have seen under taxonomic hierarchy? We have understood what is species. We have understood what is your genus. Then uh, what is family and next order. How we are classifying them, right? And last one is your kingdom.
Is that clear? So what we have studied in today's class? In today's class, we have learned about what? About biodiversity, what is systematics, that also about the binomial nomenclature, identification, classification, and the last one was our taxonomic uh, categories, right? I hope you all have, uh, yeah, you all have understood today's concept and uh, you, will, um, you will be connected with us. But see here, classification of humans, we can classify the human beings also, like kingdom, animalia, phylum, uh, chordata, they belong to the class, mammalia, order, primates, right? And the species, uh, sapiens. Is that clear? So the scientific name of the human being is your Homo sapiens. So this all the things we have learned in today's class. So you have understood how we can classify the living organisms. I hope you have understood today's session. So this is all about today's class. To get uh, more, um, to get all the videos, uh, video lectures of my classes, be connected with Vistas Learning so that you will be getting lots of knowledge from this classes. So if you have liked this video, do like it, share it with your friends, family members and also don't forget to click on the bell icon so that you get all the notification of my biology classes. Till then, take care and stay safe.